Hey everybody, what is good? What's poppin' my kings and queens? Welcome to today's video. Today we are covering Zack, the secret weapon. I'm gonna be going over everything you need to know about this champion. We're gonna start with runes, then items, then we're gonna go through the clear pathing, and then I'm gonna give you guys a bunch of tips and tricks on this champion that'll help elevate your level of gameplay, guys. So make sure that you watch until the end and stay tuned. If you do enjoy today's video, do not forget to drop a like and subscribe. But without further ado, let's get right into that video. All right, so now we're gonna talk about Zach's rune pages here. Um, as you can see on screen here, this is what I would say is Zach's best rune page, his most consistent rune page. Um, you can see here we're starting with Aftershock as our keystone, Font of Life, Conditioning, Revitalize with Secondary Tree, Magical Footwear, and Cosmic Insight. Uh, and then, of course, we're taking CDR, Armor, and Defense there. Uh, you don't really need to go for Adaptive Force on Zack, just for the sole fact that your abilities, they they don't really need that extra scaling. It's completely fine to not go it. And the extra CDR will be a lot more useful in your initial clear. Uh, but yeah, I mean, every other keystone here is pretty self-explanatory. Um, this Font of Life just allows you to get you know health back for your laners when you're ganking them. Conditioning is really good just to provide you with extra tankiness into the later stages of the game. That 5% armor and magic resist comes in really clutch. While Revitalize is something that you know makes it so your blobs just start healing you a lot more, guys, and it's just very, very cost efficient on Zac. And then, of course, Magical Footwear and Cosmic Insight are also pretty self explanatory. That's free boots, extreme gold value, and then Cosmic Insight is really awesome. I mean, 10 item haste and 18 summoner spell haste are just extremely useful on Jack Zac, guys, and I highly recommend uh, building this item on him. Um, Zach makes great use of these and this extra summoner spell haste makes it so you can make plays more often like flash all plays and those kind of things uh, The only thing I'd really ever change here uh, in terms of like secondary rune options is You can also go uh, triumph with the legend tenacity the extra tenacity can be really good against very heavy CC comps and then triumph of course can be nice just to keep yourself alive in team fights uh, but outside of that, I wouldn't really ever change too much on here, on your room page. I mean, occasionally you can pick up magic resist here if you do need it, or, or here too if you need it. Uh, if you're against like a heavy AP team, or double armor, if you're against a very heavy AD team, it is more ca cost efficient. But as a general rule of thumb, this is more or less what your room page should look like, guys. Uh, let's move on to the items. Okay, so now that we're at runes here, guys, uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, to start, start off here, we want hail blade with refillable potion and on your first back guys make sure that you're buying dark seal this item can be incredibly cost efficient on zack if you do stack it up early so do make sure that you pick this up and you know worst case scenario it doesn't get super stacked but because zack is a champion that generally doesn't die very often there's a very high probability that you'll get a good amount of dark seal stacks and that extra ap will just be extremely cost efficient on you then from there as our core item you generally if you're playing you know for consistency you're playing you know uh for the best build possible sunfire agus is a very very fantastic option on zack it provides you with everything you need it gives you ability haste armor magic resist and then of course it gives you a really nice flame touch passive which you know allows you to damage enemies that are nearby to you and just really be a menace in team fights and then of course the tenacity and slow resist that you get it's really, really good too in terms of a mythic passive. Now, moving on from there, as core items, generally Thornmail and Spirit's Visage are really, really awesome items considering you're against a standard team composition that maybe, you know, has a mix of both damage. Uh, this is a fantastic core, and that's generally what you'll be against, guys. But in the off chance that you're against a full AD or a full AP team composition, you will want to go to the situational items here and, and look at, uh, you know, another armor item instead of Spirit's Visage if you're against full AD. And then another magic resist item instead of uh, Thorn Mail if you're against a full AP team composition. So kind of play it by ear, guys, but these are all very fantastic situational items that are really good on Zack. Randuins is really good against teams that have heavy crit. Force of Nature is really good against heavy AP teams that you need to be dodging out on, like mages. Uh, Demonic Embrace is really good if you're snowballing really heavily, guys. You don't always need to go for uh, you know full-on tank items. You can go for a little bit of damage if you are pretty far ahead. Generally, I would recommend going Demonic Embrace if you already have a fully stacked Dark Seal and maybe you already upgraded that upgraded that to a Majize. Uh, getting a Demonic Embrace on top of that will just make your damage through the roof and you'll still be very hard to kill because this is assuming that you're very far ahead in the game. Abyssal Mask is also very, very awesome, guys. This item is super, super underrated, I think. A lot more people should be building this item. 
On this item, if you immobilize a champion, it causes them to take 15% increase to damage for 5 seconds, and there's no cooldown on this, guys. You can continuously just immobilize enemies and get them taking increased damage. And guys, if you didn't know, 15% increased damage on a squishy target is actually very, very high. It's incredibly powerful, guys, and this can really just mean the difference between ADC dying and living in certain fights. Especially considering, like, if you were to jump onto an ADC and knock them up on the enemy team, and all of your team members on your team were to follow up, they'd all do 15% increased damage, right? So that's incredibly powerful. Now, Warbog's armor is fantastic if, like, let's just say you're against a very balanced team composition, you know, very standard team comp. They have a lot of, you know, they have AD and AP threats. Everybody's more or less even on the enemy team in terms of, like, how much gold they've accumulated. Building a Warmogs in that situation is really, really good, guys, because it just gives you a flat amount of HP. This is assuming you're building this, like, uh, fourth item after you built your core. Um, this will just make you pretty much impossible to kill against these team comps, guys. You'll just be an absolute menace. You'll have so much health, so much health regeneration when you're outside of combat, and it, it, it's just going to make you just so annoying to play against, guys. Highly recommend going this as a fourth item in, in, in situations like that. Now, uh, these are just, you can also go Cosmic Drive, guys. So this is like the Giga Snowball build. Um, an example would be, you're against maybe like a full AD team composition and you're really fed. A really good build for you to go, guys, would be Sunfire Aegis, Thorn Mail into then uh, Demonic Embrace into then Cosmic Drive with your Mishai's. <laughs> and with this build, guys, you'll be so fucking hard to kill. Like, you'll be hard to kill because you'll have so much HP. You'll have Thorn Mail. You have a lot of armor already. You also build plated steel caps in this build, and this full build, guys, this this full five item build with demonic embrace, cosmic drive, Magi, Stole Stealer, uh, Sunfire Aegis, and Thormail with plated steel caps. Like you're just gonna be doing so much damage, the enemy team will have no idea how to deal with you, and that's just really good in those kind of situations. And you can also do it on the flip side if you're against an AP team. You can just go Sunfire Aegis into Spears Visage, and then just do the same old thing with dead demonic embrace, cosmic drive, and Magi, Soul Stealer with Mercury Treads instead. And guys, you're just gonna be an absolute menace, just tearing apart the enemy team. But without further ado, guys, let's get into the clear path part of the guide. Okay, so let's get into the clear path. Shout out to Flaris here, guys, for providing us with this Zack Jungle clear path today, guys. Of course, at level 1 here, you're wanting to start with your W, uh, which you will level up. And you will be, as you can see here, kiting your red buff towards your Krux. Uh, slowly but surely, just kind of walking towards the Krux here. Uh, weaving auto attacks in whenever you can, using your W whenever it's up. And of course, picking up your blobs in between those two abilities and you can see here guys you stay very very healthy in your jungle clear as Zack and as long as you're using your abilities optimally and collecting your blobs you're not gonna have to worry about losing too much HP you can see here we level up our Q second of course and we're just gonna be constantly bashing the camps into each other to get maximum damage using our W to clear out all the small uh, crags there and then now moving on to the raptors now you want to start by hitting the small raptor into the big raptor here um, and then just w in all of them simultaneously you take raptors really really quickly on zach you don't need to worry about hitting the small raptors outside of the one time that you do hit them there and after you get the big raptor low enough for your jungle item to finish it off you just walk over to the next camp here hitting all three of them with your e on the wolf camp here and dragging it up towards your blue buff which you will Start aggroing just so you can take both at the same time. Now, quick note, guys, you will need to start. Uh, you will need to stand exactly in this spot here. Uh, it's kind of in between those two crossways, and after that, you can then kite this towards your Gromp, which you can pull towards yourself, and do the same old thing with. Because Zach does so much AOE damage with all of his abilities, you can take camps like this very efficiently, guys, and you can do a full clear like this by about three minutes and twenty seconds. That's when you'll have this all completed, and then you can go ahead and go to your Scuttle Crab, guys, which will have spawned five seconds ago. So, Zack's Jungle clear speed is really, really quick, guys. You just need to work on this and practice tool, and you guys will have it down pat in no time. All right, kings and queens. So, now that we've gotten through all the other good stuff in the guide, it's time to go on to the tips and tricks where I show you guys some things that you probably didn't know, even as Zack means. The first thing I want to talk about here, guys, is your Q. Is actually an auto reset guys it's very important to note that so you might notice I can Q and I can auto attack between like that so you throw your Q out you can see I can get really fast auto sense so I Q auto 
and then I can Q auto again. You see that? It's really quick, so I can auto, Q, auto, Q. And, and it gets really fast, guys. It's just good to do that into your combo just to make it a little bit faster. And that way, you'll, you'll just make sure to, you know, get, um, get extra DPS in there. Now, another thing to note, guys, I'm just going to clear these target dummies. If your dummies are, like, right on top of each other like this, um, when you throw your Q out and you just click on the same target again, it'll automatically target the, the target that's right beside it. So in, in team fights, guys, you don't need to worry about, like, um... Like, say there's two enemies that are, like, right on top of each other like this. You don't need to worry about, like, trying to click on the other guy in, like, the situation where they're both moving around and shit. Just, just click on the same target twice, and, and it'll actually bind to the other target that's right on top of them, your second Q, and then it'll smack them together, just so you do know. Um, now, another thing to note is that your Zac Q does AoE damage, uh, AoE damage when your targets actually hit each other. So, I'll, I'll, I'll show you real quick right here. So, we do this, auto, then we do this, one sec, sorry. You can see here, it did AoE damage to the third target right here, guys. It actually damaged him as well. I'll show you one more time real quick. You can see, this target right over here gets damaged as well, which is really good to know. Uh, another thing that I want to show you guys is actually your Q can latch on to other things as well, um, such as towers. So anything that's really targetable, guys, you can latch your Q onto, which is really nice to note. Uh, it'll be able to latch onto towers, you can latch onto jungle, plants, pretty much everything that you guys need to latch onto, you'll be able to do it. Um, you just need to make sure that you have an original target that's nearby. Of course, Skittlecrab is another example of something that you can latch onto. Uh, but yeah, let's just sp spawn all the jungle camps, and let's just find a plant to latch onto here. So, let's get a dummy, and you can see here, guys. And you can see we can latch onto even a scrying orb, things like that, guys. You can latch onto pretty much anything that's targetable, with the exception of like Alawi's uh, tentacles for some reason that's still not allowed. And I think gangplank barrels are another thing that you can't do for whatever reason. I think Riot will eventually change this, but um, just something to note, guys. Now, another quick little tip here, guys, is actually this one's for your W. You can actually hide your Q animation with your W. If you WQ like that, it's actually. It's actually like really distracting and, you, and a lot of the time the enemy will be complete caught completely off guard you just have to w then q like at the same time basically guys and a lot of the time the enemy will just have no idea what's going on i mean your q is already pretty hard to dodge but when you add that extra animation on top of it they're just like left like confused that they even got hit by your q to begin with which is really helpful um another quick tip here guys is you can actually uh, buffer your q and your r mid-air while using your e Buffering just means that, like, basically, you click on it, and by the time that you land, it'll automatically use it, right? So, like, I, I pressed my R when I was, like, right here midair, and it was still used by the time that I land. You can also do this with your Q. You can just buffer it, and it'll, it'll throw as soon as you land, right? You just press it while you are midair, and then you can press it, like, any time when you're in the air, and then as soon as you land, it'll throw it out no matter what. Um, now another thing is, this is actually regarding Zhonya's, so I'm going to go buy Zhonya's Hourglass real quick. Let's pick that up. And this is actually really neat. Um, you can do this. I'm going to put a target dummy here just to show you guys. You guys can Zhonya's mid-air, guys. And your E will still go off, as you can see here, right? And this is actually very, very useful for avoiding CC. Like, if there's a Gragas or a Janna or somebody who can easily knock you out of your E, just popping your Zhonya's mid-air like this can allow you to avoid that with ease. You can't be CC'd at all while you're using your Zhonya's, and you can use it basically any time while you're mid-air. You see, I used it, like, right at the very start there. You can use it, like, at the very end, like, what, just before you're about to land. And it'll work no matter what, guys. And it's a really nice little tip here. I actually had no idea that this was a thing. Had some Zach mains show me this, and I think it's very useful. Uh, another cool thing to note here, guys, is your E will allow you to jump over uh, Dragon Pit and Baron Pit as well. I uh, just want to make sure that you're in a spot where you can hop over it. And this will allow you to steal the objective uh, from time to time. So if you can see here, guys, I can get all the way over, right? I can go right here. And you, and I, you can actually smite the objective on your way over, guys. And that, that's really nice to do because you're not actually putting yourself in any danger. And you can and you can smite the objectives assuming that you do the jump right, right? And uh, as you saw when I jumped from here to here, 
uh, I was able to still smite the objective. If you have, say you have vision in this pit here, you let you drop a ward. You see that the dragon's getting pretty low. Just charge up your E, go over, smite, and you're completely safe. And you can also do this with uh, Baron Pit as well, guys. Uh, so you can do the same thing here. Just do this. And it's actually easier on Baron Pit, honestly, because the terrain's a lot more forgiving. But yeah, a quick little note there, guys. Nice little trick to allow you to steal Baron and Dragon. <clears throat> So another interesting thing here, guys, and I actually need to get a different item active to do this. And this one's actually not very well known at all because not very many people use item actives on Zach. Um, here, one sec. Let's just get over here. Um, is you can proc item actives on your R and then you can throw out your second Q. So like this is actually quite sophisticated. So I'm going to try to do it very slowly. So like say, you know, your second, your second Q, of course, is procced by an auto attack, right? And you, and you pull your uh, two enemies together like that, right? So when you use an item active during your, your ultimate as Zack, it allows you to then use an auto attack for one time, right? So, for example, if you threw your Q out, you pressed R, you used an item active, then it allows you to auto attack once. So you can use the second part of your Q to pull two opponents together, right? And this is actually very, very strong, I think, guys. I'm just gonna do that one more time really quickly. So just to, just to show you, you throw out your first Q, you press R, use your item active, you get one auto attack off. And then while you're still ultimating, getting all that CC down, you can also pull them together, which as you guys know, if you guys play Zac at all, you normally can't use any abilities or anything at all during the time of your ultimate, right? So that's a really nice little tip, guys, that I think people should be making use of. I do think that AP Zack actually does have a lot of potential, considering this is a thing that's in the game. Just to show you guys one more time, you throw your Q out, you press R, you item active, you pull them together, it's like so. Boom. Nice and easy. You can see your R is still going off that entire time. It's very, very interesting, and I do like it quite a bit, guys. Um, it's a really cool little tip. Um, now, another quick little tip here, guys. This is going to be the last tip of the day. I know so a lot of people actually don't know this, but you see these little wings above your, your level right here? That means that your passive is, in fact, up. So if you're ever, like, in, in, like, a hurry and you don't really know if your passive's up, but you don't want to look down here and go through all that bullshit, or maybe you're against the Zack, just look right here. Look at the wings. Look at the wings right here, or the Zack's on your team, rather. Just look at the wings, and, th and that'll, that'll tell you whether or not your passive is up, guys. If you guys didn't know, this means that your passive is up. That Basically, the wings are just, like, to show you that you have an extra life, right? And that's just an easy way to just know that your passive is ready and that you are safe to go for, like, a pretty aggressive play. Uh, but with that being said, guys, that's actually going to be the end of today's video. I really hope that you guys all enjoyed it. You guys learned something new. I certainly did doing the research for this video, and I would like to give a shout out to the Zach Mains community on Reddit. You guys actually did help me quite a bit um, in teaching me just general tips and tricks about the champion. So shout out to you guys. But yeah, guys, if you did enjoy today's video, do not forget to drop a like. Do not forget to drop a subscribe to the channel. Uh, but And yeah, guys, uh, I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace out.